call to order the February 20th, 2019 Planning and Zoning Meeting. Roll call, please. Barbie? Here. Buckley? Castro? Here. Klein? Yes. Maxwell? Here. Wright? Chair Doe? Here. Five present. Approval of the agenda. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? And if none, I will take a motion. So moved. Second. All in do, favor say aye. Do we need to? Aye. Oh. Uh, so I have a seat. Do we have the yeah. minutes? We do not have the January 23rd minutes for approval. So we'll have those on the next meeting. Do we need to adjust so that? So do agenda? we need do we need to do an amendment to delete that item of the agenda? No. no. Okay. No. Thank you. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Um, the public participation portion of the meeting. This is an opportunity for anyone to speak on an I on anything that is not part of the agenda. So if you have any items you would like to bring up, we welcome you to come to the podium. And there being none, I turn to new business. A minor subdivision plat. This is the final plat of the Egyptian Theater subdivision, 135 North 2nd Street, City of DeKalb slash Egyptian Theater. And I believe we have a presentation first. So if you can state your name and address um, for the record, please. Yeah, good evening. My name is Alex Neard. I'm the executive director at the Egyptian Theater at 135 North 2nd Street. Um, and uh, very excited to be in front of you tonight to talk about a project that's been a long time coming. Um, this community and the Egyptian Theater and its supporters have been talking about air conditioning the theater uh, for uh, probably close to 10 years. Uh, so we're really excited to have done uh, the hard work of uh, figuring out how best to move forward with this project and uh, are in front of you tonight to uh, hopefully uh, combine uh, the parcels uh, to allow us to move forward with that project. Um, just a quick history of uh, this specific uh, concept um, that's going to be in front of council soon. Um, after funding was approved uh, December 18th, uh, 2018, so just you know, less than two months ago, um, we started to move forward uh, as quickly as we could with uh, design, working with uh, an architect, uh, local construction, engineers, uh, to start to establish exactly uh, what was going to be the best solution to move forward with this project. Uh, and we uh, came up with that um, solution. Uh, which is a two-story addition along the south side of the building, uh, along Palmer Court there in the alley. Um, and that is going to accommodate uh, the structural and space for the mechanical units, both in the, both in the basement as well as the roof. Um, our architect is here tonight. She's going to go into detail about that and be able to answer a lot of the questions. Um, but I just want to go through the history of that. Um, in January, we were made aware of some concerns um, from our neighbors, uh, the Burks, at the Royal Travel, Billi Travel Building. Um, so we met uh, along with the mayor, um, city manager, city staff. Um, our construction manager, our architect, sat down to talk about what those concerns were. Um, we immediately after that meeting went back with our architect, sat down, put everything back on the table to see what we could do to possibly um, um, respond to those concerns. We came back what we thought um, was uh, another great uh, solution to that. So we had a, another meeting a week later with everybody, came to the table. Um, unfortunately, um, that second kind of take at it um, was not received well. So we went back again, um, tried again uh, to make some adjustments and changes. <coughs> and this went on uh, multiple times. Um, so to date, um, we've been doing that uh, for about a month and a half. Um, our board has met multiple times um, to evaluate um, the different iterations of these concepts. Um, at this point, we've made uh, some fairly significant um, concessions to uh, the original design that was intended. Uh, we've lost some women's restrooms. Uh, we've lost over 200 square feet of storage. Uh, we've lost uh, a public entrance that we had hoped to add um, facing 2nd Street uh, to a potential uh, patio area to adjoin uh, with the Hillside Restaurant. 
um, and to open up uh, kind of that public area. So uh, we've shrunk the building down as small as we possibly can to be able to accommodate uh, the mechanicals that are necessary. Lisa will talk about here in a minute. Uh, we are literally within inches of uh, the minimum clearances to be able to fit these units to air condition uh, the building. Um, so we've made some pretty significant um, sacrifices at this point with the project. Uh, our board has continued to evaluate this and has chimed in and we feel that uh, what's before the city now um, is uh, you know, the best uh, compromise that the theater can put forward. And uh, we believe this is what's going to be best for not only the Egyptian theater, the downtown, and the community uh, moving forward for the next 90 years. Uh, hopefully most of you are aware of the economic and cultural impact that the theater has every single year. And uh, with over 40,000 people coming through our doors, um, this is going to have a tremendous impact on the community uh, economically and culturally uh, as we move forward. So we're really excited. Uh, the end of this year, we're going to be celebrating the 90th anniversary of the Egyptian Theater, uh, open December 10th, 1929. And uh, so what an exciting project for the community as we move forward. Uh, and it's important to know, we really have spent years evaluating what is the best option uh, logistically and economically um, to move forward with this project. There's been a great deal of evaluation of the different options with engineers, architects. Uh, our board has meant, uh, spent a tremendous amount of time evaluating these, um, discussing with all the experts to figure out what was going to be the best uh, use of the public dollars, not only the city dollars that have been put forward, but also our private donor dollars and grants uh, that are also going to help with this project. So. We want to be great stewards of uh, the public's dollars. Uh, we want to be great stewards of this community treasure. Um, last year, the Egyptian Theater was named as one of 20 architectural treasures in the state of Illinois. Uh, so we were honored uh, in December uh, before City Council to have over 35 letters of support from uh, key individuals throughout the community supporting this project. Uh, and we feel uh, that the vast majority of the community is excited about this project, is excited to move forward. Um, so here to answer questions tonight, um, but I'd like to introduce Lisa Sharp with Sharp Architects, um, our architect on the project. She's going to uh, walk you through the project and answer any technical questions that you guys have. So thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Alex. <coughs> Good evening, commissioners, staff, and public. We're excited to share, walk through the documents that we've given to you in your backup. Um, to get a little, let's see if I can, yeah, it worked. So a little, just to get our bearings here. Uh, this is an aerial view of the theater. Um, obviously, the L-shaped building um, enters off of 2nd Street, and the southern edge of the building is along Palmer Court. Um, in your packet, you received a topographic kind of site diagram, and I wanted to walk through what this diagram means. The, the red line is the boundary of city property. The city owns um, Palmer, Court, Palmer, Palmer Court from first to second, and then it jig jags around between parcels and buildings on the north and south edge. Um, the magenta or purple line there is supposed to be th is the conveyance area that is proposed and will be reviewed with City Council next Monday. The green line is the actual footprint of the building that we're proposing. So if we zoom in just a little bit more, um, you'll see where these, all these three different spaces fit with each other. Um, the conveyance limit um, allows us to uh, have fire or access to the building and fire exiting from the building and um, the city will be considering that conveyance um, next Monday so what you're considering tonight is the subdivision plat that contingent upon city council approval over the next weeks that um, if that property is conveyed to the Egyptian that you would allow us to plat the two properties together. This is important for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it, if I have 
we need to, it's easier if we have one property to deal with the addition otherwise I have to consider the addition as a separate building and if it's a separate building I have fire doors at every single entrance into restrooms into concession stands into all those storage rooms so it's it's a much easier um, process if we can consider it all as one property so I think Alex hit on the design process earlier we have been through many many um, iterations of this design we've moved the whole building um, 11 feet west of where it was originally proposed or sorry east of where it was originally proposed um, there was discussion of trying to move it even further east but I think you'll find that we have we have neighbors on both ends who who don't want us to go certain directions so we think this is a, um, a, r a really nice compromise between the two um, the basement <coughs> so the basement level is we are going to have a full basement that has basically used for the two air handlers that will serve the majority of the building. Um, in the paper, we all keep talking about new air conditioning, but we're actually getting new heat as well. If you've ever had a chance to go visit the mechanical room in the existing theater, you'll see that the, the behemoth in the basement is on its last legs. So we will be getting two new um, air handlers in the basement and as you can see there I, I'm I'm within like four inches of not having enough space for that equipment in the basement so it is a tight fit first floor um, we're going to be expanding to the south with two new women's room women's restrooms and a men's room um, we'll be increasing from three existing toilets in the women's rooms to 14 six in the men with 15 proposed in the new um, we will also be um, renovating the existing foyer area and getting new concessions and storage and receiving area um, when this building was built in 1929 um, they they were it was a slash and burn budget I think because there is zero storage in this building <laughs> um, that they are even able to operate with in the facilities that they're in now is amazing to me. The mezzanine level, um, again, we get new men's and women's restrooms here. Women, we've, um, we're increasing from two to six toilet fixtures, men from two to seven toilets and urinals. So it's, we're now just reaching the recommended level of number of fixtures for a 1,450 seat auditorium. So we're really excited that um, we'll have happy patrons in the future. We will also be getting expanded foyer space up here and a concession stand on the upper level. The roof level will carry, will include um, condensing units for the two main air handlers and a couple of smaller rooftop units to serve smaller spaces. So what's the impact of all of this on Palmer Court? Included in your packet was um, an existing and a concept plan for the alley. The existing plan is on the top. Um, in that plan, you'll see that we are going to, planning on um, losing a couple of trees west of the addition, west of the addition, and the trash um, corral. We'll also be removing paving so that we can excavate for the building and put in um, storm and sewer lines. The proposed plan shows the addition in blue. Um, we're able to maintain four trees west of the addition. We will keep the four trees south of the addition. We are proposing to build two smaller trash corrals. Um, right now there are six total dumpsters in a, <coughs> in a corral that could hold 10, maybe 12 if you really packed them in. Um, so there will still be loading space back there, um, but we're gonna separate the corrals into a couple of them. <coughs> we'll also be repaving um, portions of that. Um, we're gonna be sitting down tomorrow, actually tomorrow to discuss with city and um, <coughs> the scope of that paving work. And you know, this is still a design in process, um, but we're, we're really happy with where this design is at the moment. So what will this look like? 
Um, this photo is just a, a photo from First Street. You sh should all be familiar with this view, Donna on the right. Um, as we step in closer, the photo on the left, um, as you approach Royal Travel Building is on the left with the apartment access. Um, at this point, you will start to see the addition from this view. As you come further down the alley, um, we'll, be save, we'll be keeping those four trees, and now you can really see the, the addition. It will be, um, have a base of face brick, veneer, and stucco above. We'll be providing lighting for the alley and lighting for the building. Um, we really want this to feel like a public facade, not an alley facade. Um, and we think it'll still be an attractive space. From First Street or from Second Street, um, the new addition is actually set 68 feet back from the uh, main facade of the Egyptian. Um, but we're still treating it like a front facade. It will have um, large windows to that foyer above in the mezzanine, and um, there will be a green space out front. Now, it should be noted that both of the, the green space on either end of the addition will remain city property. Um, so that can be developed further as the city desires. Um, I think the Egyptian would love to make this the east um, green space into you know a public plaza type of space where um, events could be held outside in the future as well. So why are we, um, why here? Um, there's been a lot of proposals by other people saying, well, well can't you put it over on the second street? Can't you put it over into the empty lot at first and locust? It, it really is not successful. We have to, especially for the HVAC system, we have to backfeed into the existing system, unless we're willing to completely replace everything and you know, add another two, three, four million dollars onto things. So this is the place where this addition should be. It has to go on the south side. It also allows us to connect those bathrooms into the foyer spaces. It allows us to provide storage onto concession spaces. It just doesn't work to have all of those uses from other corners of the building. So the issue at hand at this point for Planning Commission is not really review of the whole design and everything else here, but if the City Council approves the conveyance next week, will Planning Commission allow us to combine the properties? And that's the question that you're being asked tonight. Um, and we highly encourage you to approve that because I think it makes a lot of sense and will um, help simplify our design. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so I turn to the city. Thank I you. I have some uh, questions of the. Oh, hang on, hang on, Ron. Let's, let's, yep. Okay. Yeah, you had a staff report <coughs> in your packet. Uh, the applicant <coughs> went over the uh, project very well. Uh, just <coughs> some uh, follow up background. Last December, it was noted uh, there was a preliminary development incentive agreement approved between the city and the theater for the proposed expansion upgrades of the facility. They noted what they're adding on there. The big thing is the air conditioning units and also expanding the restrooms and concession facilities, storage, et cetera. Um, that uh, addition is gonna be in the south end of the building, uh, moving into Palmer Court, which is owned by the city. It's not a right of way, it's owned by the city. Fee simple title. Um, as the property is within the TIF district, the city has provided public notice of its intention to consider conveyance of the property, as shown on the plat and also the conveyance uh, drawing. And the theater is the only party that's expressed interest in the acquisition. Uh, so under the terms of the development incentive agreement, the city would approve uh, the final plat for the Egyptian uh, theater, which would clean up the property ownership lines, create one lot encompassing the existing lot plus the uh, area where the addition's going and the conveyance of the property to the theater. So to clean all that up. And as was noted, the commission's role is reviewing the plan. It's not review of the plan or approving the plan. Uh, that's in the hands of the council, but we did provide the, all the background related to that so you get some context of where the plat is in terms of the lot lines and why they're shown <laughs> at those locations. Um, so the, plat, uh, the plans have been reviewed by the city 
various departments, by the police department, the fire department, regarding uh, the access down Palma Court, as you can see from the drawings, that is being reduced a little bit. But it is one way, Palmer Court is, from 1st Street to 2nd Street, and will remain that way. And the fire department, police department, have approved of the, the plan, the changes. And we've reviewed them with the other taxing districts, too. The city engineer and all the departments have confirmed that it's acceptable plan. There were a few minor changes needed on the certificates. Uh, we did get a revised plat uh, since the packet went out Friday. Those are the ones that are in front of you tonight, uh, meeting all the requirements. Uh, as noted, the commission, uh, after it make its recommendation, this will go to the city council, uh, their next meeting next Monday, for review of the plat <coughs> and the property conveyance. Uh, I've prepared a sample motion that approves the um, plat. Um, we have to update the date of the plat on there as part of the motion. And if you want to add to it, uh, it'd be subject to the city council approving the conveyance of the property to the Egyptian theater it could be added on to the motion if you wish to have that. We did receive two letters from adjacent business owners uh, since the packets went out objecting to the plans. <coughs> Those were provided to you also in addition to a letter with eight signatures on it indicating from adjacent business owners indicating their support of the plans. And those are also provided to you uh, tonight in front of you. So I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. Okay. So before we open up to questions, I, we do have s a few um, speaker request forms. So even though this isn't a public hearing, we are giving the public an opportunity to speak. Um, so the first one is Larry Burke. If you can. Oh, sure. Mary Wilson. Okay. If you would go to the podium. Um, and state your name and address, please. Mary has a hearing aid, so she's got, she has all Okay. I'm Mary Wilson, and I own Hillside Restaurant 121 North 2nd Street in DeKalb, Illinois. And uh, I just have a few things I just want to say is that I've owned the Hillside for over 30 years. I've enjoyed and had much pleasure in history with the Egyptian Theater. I'm all for the air conditioning and we gave our support. But I recently became aware of the plan, of the concept plan. I have had some concerns about the effect on my property value and the quality of life for my restaurant and my patrons. I feel more studies need to be done and to contact us and have more communication and make this more transparent. And uh, we are the stakeholders between this, and we still, we're still going on. So I, I would like to see that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Larry Burke. I'm Larry Burke. I, uh, my wife uh, Kay. We live at 122 North First. We own the Royal Travel Building. I've uh, been a travel agency in there for about 50 years. Uh, we have a lot of concerns. Uh, I heard we, we support the uh, air conditioning for the Egyptian theater. We differ on how it can be done. We think it could be hung on the building. In the engineering today, they're going to tell you it can't be hung on the building. Well, let's find out it can't be from multiple sources. Another issue, fire trucks. This gets down to 12 feet in there. I want you to get one of the fire trucks to go down there and have them set up and put the arms out and see if it'll work. It's easy to stand up here for somebody to drive through. They drove a fire truck through there, but they didn't set it up and they didn't stage it to fight the fires that will exist on the second floor. Those are major concerns. Uh, I want to run through the history of how we've gotten here. On the 18th of December, I showed up at a council meeting to support a friend of mine. On that agenda that night was the uh, air conditioning for the theater. I went over, I got home that night, I went to my wife and I said, you know, I would like to know where that air conditioning is going to be. So the next day I went over and asked Mr. Nerod where it was. He proceeded to take me out to the Palmer Court and show me the property line. It's built to the maximum. There's a, there's a uh, 
a cement barrier out there. It's, it's all the way out to the barrier. He said, we're going to take it all the way out to there. We're going to build it two stories up, and we're going to put a, a, an air conditioning unit on the top of it the size of a bus. Now, we found that out uh, on the 19th, 19th of December. There has been no contact from anybody at the Egyptian theater to anyone in the neighborhood, the stakeholders. Our building, You're, somebody's going to give them two and a half million dollars to devalue my property and to create a problem for Mary. Now you tell me that makes a lot of sense and that that's fair. Two and a half million dollars of government money, taxpayer money, we put money in to devalue our buildings. Is that the way we work? I hope not. The, the time for us, they, they should have been keeping us in the loop. The city should have been keeping us in the loop. You're right, we sat down with Mayor Smith and uh, City Manager Nicholas and Steve Irving and others, and you know what the mayor did? He apologized for me for, to me because there had never been any communication with us. They knew what they were doing. This is, this is maddening. They knew what they were doing, and they knew they were going to harm our property, but they didn't have, they didn't have uh, any, they didn't have any empathy for us. That's wrong. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to echo these same things Monday night right here. I grew up in this town. I have never done something like this before, but I am worked up. You're going to take, they're going to, that, that construction in that alley is going to be four to six months. What do you think that's going to do to Mary's building, to her people? Her restaurant is right there. Her kitchen is right there. Kay and I live at 122 North First. We live there. They're going to they're gonna create a tunnel. They're going to block the view of the sun. We're not going to get sun into part of our house. We moved downtown. We drank the Kool-Aid. Moved downtown. We love it. But we want to keep it, Palmer Court, what it was designed for. We walk to church. We walk to the hillside. We walk to the bank. That's what the city wanted, and we did it. I'd ask you not do this, because you should do a study. Find out what the impacts are going to be on, on those people that reside on it. I don't know who the eight people are the sign the support of it. I got news for you. I visited everyone up and down the street, <clears throat> the property owners. I, that the property owners are the people that have the businesses that back up to Palmer Court. I made the trip around. As a matter of fact, I'm the one that triggered it to Mary and Gavin. They didn't find out about this until January. Why didn't the Egyptian theater say something to them? Ask them. Look them in the eye. I could tell you, I know. We tried to get them to modify it, and they didn't. They wouldn't bend. They're too stubborn. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, you know, when Nancy Pelosi passed the ACA Act, you got to pass it to see what's in it. Or the mayor daily in Chicago, goes out and cuts X's in Midway Field at 10 o'clock at night. They've done this in the darkness. Is that how we work? I hope that isn't how we work in DeKalb. We work at night. We look people in the eye and we tell them what we're going to do and we can disagree. But don't, don't run around me like that. Don't play with me. I'm a pretty straightforward guy. And I like to be dealt with that. And if I'm not, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. But I have yet to have anyone say that the, what I've explained to you is not the truth. I ask you not to approve this, to send it back to study and let somebody come up with some studies that says this is feasible. Are there any questions from people that live here, live in the alley. Any questions for us? Not at this moment. 
Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to comment? Okay. Ron, you had some questions. Yeah, I have a question for the architect. <coughs> I'm having a little problem in looking at this plat and figuring out distances. How far, how many feet is the proposed addition at its narrowest point from the Hillside Restaurant Building? So at the narrowest point, the property line will be 12.35 feet from the property line at the Hillside. Building to building is actually a little bit further than that. And then there's a jag there, of course. Right. I don't. For the life of me, I don't see how a big fire truck would get through there. Um, we did put cones out, and um, the fire department was comfortable that they could swing through there. We have run the turning radius software as well with the civil engineer, um, and it is possible. Now, it's not the great big hook and ladder truck. Um, I'm told by the fire department that that is, that is not the truck they would put back there anyhow because the... I'm trying to imagine a fire and the... But rapidly trying to get through there with their big equipment, I, I would think it would be awfully tight. I, I'm not a fireman. I, you will have to talk to the fire department about that, but they've given their approval. Yeah, the fire department did indicate approval of it. They indicated that the... Oh, I understand that. They would not uh, take a large truck down that the Palmer Court. They would take they the would end They would stage it up probably on 2nd Street if there was a fire. They could have other smaller vehicles going through Palmer Court, but... So that... That south wall of the new addition would be solid brick. Is that what that would be? Is that what they would look at out of the hillside restaurant? Well, let me let's see if I can. So, um, one of the things that's very curious about this uh, building is the the paving at this corner of the building is actually four feet higher than the first floor. <coughs> um, Originally, I thought we'd have some windows in the, the bathrooms and, and that sort of thing. Well, those windows would be basically at knee height from the alley. So we're not planning on, on windows at this time. Um, we do want to do something decorative um, there with the, with the stucco and trim work. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit of glazed block to kind of mimic some of the, the jewelry that's on the front facade. Um, and we'll be doing some lighting, but um, that's still up for discussion. Now, if a fire truck came off of North First Street, though, it would be quite a bit wider, right? Correct. Until yeah. it narrows down at that one point. Right. And there's no way of moving some of this around to the west side of the building? There really isn't, because you, on the west side of the building, I can't put a concession stand on the theater space. I can't put bathrooms all the way down that side. Um, you know, it's just not conducive. We'd rather not do, we have to do the HVAC on the south side. We don't want to be doing multiple additions on this building. The cost just starts to extrapolate. Um, the, the, the Burks hoped that we could flatten this out to nine or ten feet worth of an addition, which would basically get us to the number of toilets that we currently have, and we'd be sitting, we'd be setting an air handler on the ground at that point or up on the roof. There's just, you know, the idea that you you want the HVAC but not the addition. Well, that just means that the HVAC equipment is sitting on the ground right where you can see it. So um, it really just, there was no common ground that we were able to find. Okay, thank you. I have a question for Lisa. Yeah, go ahead. Lisa, so just so everybody's clear too, there is no ability to put the HVAC system on the roof, correct? Um, we could, but the problem is, is that <clears throat> all of the returns come under the theater. If you've ever looked under there, there's actually, I think there's like 180 little circular return discs under the chairs. So all the returns are coming from under the theater. So we would have to find a way to get all of those lines, all of those ducts up to the roof. So yes, I could do it. One of my issues there though is 
you know, it's it's the same structural support or yeah so you've got structural support at that point you have the same clearance issues so it's it's still the same footprint of a building and then you have noise issues with air handlers so we'd like to get as much of that below the equipment will last longer mm -hmm. 20 or 25 years versus 50 years and it's more expensive to put it in the basement this is not the, the cheap option um, but it's the right option so that we're not coming back in 25 years asking for more TIF funds for an air handler. Thank you. I'm still trying to think my question. Okay. Katerina, do you have any? I was just wondering about the comment that the property might be devalued or the adjacent properties might be devalued uh, because of this addition, and I was wondering if you had looked into that at all. Um, yeah, so we've uh, on our board, uh, one of our board members is a commercial realtor in the area, so we've uh, looked at that extensively. Um, from every all the research we've done and the experts we've talked to, we don't see how this project would negatively impact um, property value. Um, we have yet to see any reports that say that would do so. Uh, if anything, we feel that this will continue to raise property values throughout the downtown as the Egyptian Theater is open year-round. Um, you know, right now we've got, as I mentioned earlier, over 40,000 people that come downtown to the Egyptian each year. Um, to add multiple more months a year to increase that foot traffic, um, that's going to make that uh, even more desirable for people to have businesses downtown, to live downtown uh, with a more bustling uh, activity. So. Um, you know, we have yet to see uh, any reports that say otherwise. Um, certainly, if someone had something um, you know that they wanted to bring forward with uh, definitive studies or proof uh, that show that, but uh, from uh, everything that we've looked to and people we've talked with, we don't see uh, how this would uh, devalue any property. Sure, go ahead. They don't have any reason You'll, to think that there is You have to go to the podium because the, the public can't hear you. Devaluing of the property? They think? She didn't ask if they thought. Why don't they have a study? Find out. They haven't been candid and honest with us from the beginning. And you're going to take their word now? Give me a break. Do the study and find out if it's going to hurt our value. You think it's going to hurt her restaurant? You don't? Okay, so our, I just want to make it clear that the, the property value issues and things like that, that's a city council issue. So I would encourage you to bring that up to the city council on Monday night. If you have further comments about the plat piece of this, then I welcome you to bring those comments to the to the podium. Go ahead. Because, uh, and the reason why I say that is we can't. There's this is Mary we, Wilson we speaking again from Hillside house. Restaurant, and I just want to say that the storage comes up. I have two windows facing Palmer Court. It's a narrow, tight space now. My patrons will be looking at storage and trucks going through, and the exhaust fume comes through the restaurant. It's not a healthy situation, and I, I just, uh, I, I again, I agree with Larry that there's just not been enough forethought in this for all of us involved in Palmer Court. We are a community. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Can you speak to, to yeah. that? Can I Let's see if I, well, now I've done it. So just to address that a little bit, I just the storage room that's shown here, that front facade is actually 13 feet behind the main portion of the hillside. Um, so it's not in front of any of the dining room windows at all. Um, I would encourage, uh, you know, the Egyptian is also using that alley right now for receiving and, and deliveries as well. So. Any exhaust issue is really not any different than what they that happens right now. So I don't think that that's actually going to affect the hillside. 
So Lisa, I do have a question in regard to that. So since they currently are using, they're receiving deliveries and stuff there, given, given the way that you've got the building laid out, mm -hmm. would they still be receiving deliveries in that area? Because it doesn't look like there's any right. doors or anything. So we're actually, because of the um, slope issues in the, in the alley, it's actually pretty tough. So well plus then we were talking about this the width there too right. so i'm curious so about that. deliveries would be in in the doors in this front facade on this okay. east facade so we're designing a ramp that will get another 10 to 12 inches down to basically a recessed patio at the first floor level of the addition okay and that's where they'd be bringing all their receiving through so uh, okay. It's a pretty nice receiving entrance look. It's nicer than I typically do for most clients, but because we were facing Second Street, we wanted that to be dressy. Okay. Sure. Oh, sorry. I just want to add on to there. Um, you know, in terms of receiving, uh, we have two deliveries that we get, Coke and gold medal for concessions. Um, Coke only delivers once a month, um, and gold medal is usually once a month as well. So in terms of deliveries and stuff, for the theater currently we're looking at maybe two trucks a month okay. so I have another question before um, I think mr. Castro might be about ready but so <laughs> with the construction of this this is my curious question now as you're constructing this and and you know given the tight area that you're going to have to work in I'm <coughs> assuming so correct me if I'm wrong that there will be some um, taking out of the current south wall because you'll be opening up that wall correct and then just the general construction that you're going to have going on do you have an estimate about now we all know weather can come into play with this about what your timeline is and what that's going to t entail when you start taking that wall out what's the impact going to be to those those neighbors to the south there you know not not just the hillside but all of those businesses there yeah What's certainly that impact yeah certainly you? a valid question so our hope if uh, this entire process is able to continue to move forward um, that we would be starting construction in uh, the summer this year in June or July to start doing site work uh, with construction taking place through the fall the hope would be that the entire expansion would be complete in December and we wouldn't have touched really anything inside the existing building the addition would be completed and then towards the end of December when we're normally closed down the last two weeks of December with the holidays um, into January we would find about a four week period of time where we would be closed down that is when we would demo some of the existing parts in the building make those cut throughs from the existing building into the addition do the restoration work and then be open by the end of January now that is a very tight time frame that means that we have to keep every component of this project moving forward uh, we are already frankly uh, delayed by about a month uh, as we continue to work um, to see if we could change uh, the concept to something that would be uh, more acceptable uh, to our neighbors um, so we're already about four weeks behind at this point if we delay things even by about another four weeks what happens is we miss that window of time in January to do that crossover work. And because we have so many community groups that utilize the theater every year, we have over 30 different community organizations that use the theater. We don't wanna displace them or have them have to cancel any events. So that means that that window of time would have to move to the end of June into July to finish that work, which means that our current plans of hopefully being open for the summer of 2020 now gets moved to the summer of 2021 so we're being you know very tight on the timeline here we're working with uh, Irving construction Steve and his crew are phenomenal to work with they uh, did the restoration work of the theater back in 1982 1983 and have done a number of projects for us through the years um, they are keenly aware of the timeline here uh, we've had multiple conversations about uh, our neighbors and limiting the impact as much as possible 
Uh, I've personally walked around and talked to all of our neighbors uh, along Palmer Court. They all have my personal contact information, and we've talked about that, uh, you know, as construction starts, of course there's going to be a mess and trucks and stuff back there. But they can call me at any time, and if they have deliveries coming in or special projects that are happening, uh, of course we will coordinate with them and work with them to make sure um, that we're great neighbors and that we don't negatively impact their business. How are you going to adjust for Corn Fest weekend? Um, so we've looked at that. Uh, you know, I've been at the theater for a number of years now. We're actively involved with Corn Fest. They use our dressing rooms for the performers. We're open the entire weekend for tours. Uh, and so where this uh, project is going to be taking place, Corn Fest has never uh, in recent years uh, done anything along there with Corn Fest, so we don't anticipate that would affect uh, Corn Fest operations or anything that they currently do. So any construction that might be going on would be blocked off enough to keep people out of that area? Correct, uh, which it would anyway, there. you know, at, at night and on the weekends and stuff like that. Um, you know, we know this is going to be a tough project both for timing as well as it's a very tight space um, to, you know, try and get all of this work in there. So uh, we're going to be working diligently with the contractors, all the engineers and everybody uh, to limit uh, the impact there. One, or go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so one other thing that I wanted to bring up um, that I think is a pretty exciting uh, addition for the community. Uh, we've been in communication with the sanitary district and because of the massive increase in toilet fixtures, we're going to be running a new uh, sewer line uh, to connect into the sewer main that's on 2nd Street. Currently our sewer main runs uh, out the northwest corner of the building on Locust Street. And so because of that project, currently there is no sewer main that runs down Palmer Court. And the Sanitary District uh, ha expressed interest in tagging onto this project and running a new uh, public sewer line down Palmer Court. And they said a lot of the businesses that are currently tied into Lincoln Highway uh, are having a lot of issues and obviously being on a state highway are very challenging uh, as from the, the issue we all saw last year with uh, in front of Top of La Luna. Mm -hmm. And so we're in discussions with them to include as part of this project uh, an infrastructure upgrade of a new public sewer main um, down that alley so that as there's issues in the future uh, and as businesses along Palmer Court between 1st and 2nd Street on Lincoln Highway, uh, if there's new restaurants to go in there there's going to be the capacity and the infrastructure uh, for them to tie into there so if we're going to have the alley torn up uh, I think it's a great opportunity to make those infrastructure upgrades um, we plan to put the alley back you know uh, better than you currently see it today with uh, better lighting uh, and a safer more pedestrian friendly area thank you Mr. Castro I, I have a question it's more it's a technicality, and I may be at the margin of this, this uh, discussion, but I just want to clarify it. Um, please correct me if where I'm mistaken, but my understanding of the theater is in the TIF district, um, and therefore TIF uh, regulations come into play. Um, do they come into play because the theater is in the TIF district, or do they come into play because the conveyance itself is a TIF transaction? Does well, my question TIF make sense? comes in play because there's a development agreement, incentive agreement regarding uh, using TIF funds for the improvements that have been talked about. So part of that in the agreement was the conveyance of the property uh, from the city to the theater and also the uh, plat was part of that because that shows the conveyance area combining that into the existing <coughs> lot for the Egyptian theater. So it's Correct. based on the agreement that was approved with the theater in December that leads to all this okay thank thank you yeah. um, I guess the, the the other question that I have and I know that there have been some discussion about this and and it, it may not necessarily um, go to the center of this discussion but uh, do we have any evidence in front of us that this can go either way in terms of the value of the properties around the theater uh, we have talked about values going down talk values potentially going up. Do we have any evidence of that in that direction, in any direction? No, is my understanding. So, okay, thank you. Are there any further comments from the public? Okay. You have to go to the podium. <coughs> um, I'm glad you brought up about the sewer. Does that mean then that Palmer Court is totally going to be torn up then the whole time? For how long? 
but that's all still being. I mean, established. they'd have to tear it up for quite a while, right? For everything. That's still being. So that's one thing I haven't heard yet is the duration of time, and I'm glad you brought that up. And that is another new element that uh, I was unaware of. Okay, so. They didn't answer your question about the length of it. It's probably more difficult for them to answer it than I wish Mr. Irving was here because that no, probably would have helped. Idea. Well, he is here, but I mean, frankly, oh. we don't have that detail. We absolutely want to shorten the sure. the excavation of that alley to the shortest period possible, and we will work with our neighbors during that period of time to deal with access and deliveries. Um, we're not planning on on pulling up the entire alley, but at, at some point it will be tough to get vehicles through there, and we will try to keep that as short as possible. Dan, do you have an idea about how long it takes for them to do the sewer piece of it? Not that you would. I'm just wondering. No. Okay. Anything else from the commissioners? Pardon? Do you have anything else, Ron? Well, I just am having a very hard time with this, though. I love the Hillside, I mean, well, I love the Hillside Restaurant. It's an institution just like the theater, and I love the theater, and I've been involved in some committees and so forth for the theater. But uh, I really don't like this jutting out into the alley like that, or the court, and I think it is going to be uh, detrimental to the Hillside Restaurant. Um, I came thinking it might be an easy decision. I'm not so convinced that it's an easy decision now. Uh, it's a matter of weighing these two conflicting uh, situations, uh, improving the theater, and it seems to me there must be some other way of doing the air conditioning, which I certainly favor. I think it needs air conditioning without having to be 13 feet from their building and you haven't convinced me yet I don't care what they say at the fire department getting a big fire truck through there with there's a fire and it's a hectic situation would be very tricky yeah it's uh, certainly a valid concern uh, I was personally out there with the fire chief when they coned it off and brought a fire truck through there so um, I mean they looked at it um, they, I believe uh, when Lisa and I were out there with the fire chief, they said they only needed 10 feet um, and we've uh, allowed for 12 feet there. Um, so that issue, I think, you know. That's not the fire truck they have today, I take it. Correct, yes. I don't know what with technology and so forth, what kind of a fire truck we might see 10 years from now. It might be a much bigger apparatus than that get through there. Yeah, that I don't know. That would be for yeah. the fire department it's to answer. It's so narrow that there's no room to spare. Yeah, all we can go off of is, you know, the codes and uh, regulations that are out there right now in terms of transportation and vehicles that are out there um, and try and make, you know, the best provisions possible for the future. Uh, in terms of your questions about the hillside, um, certainly it was a disappointment on our behalf um, that there was concerns from the hillside. We believe strongly and genuinely that this will be a huge improvement uh, to the hillside and the surrounding businesses. Um, it is offset again uh, from 2nd Street far enough that when you look out the two windows uh, from the dining room and the hillside, you won't see this addition. It doesn't come that far to the east. Uh, it will be a great opportunity to enhance the landscaping that's there. Uh, I encourage anybody to drive down uh, that alleyway right now. Uh, there is brick, there's asphalt, there's concrete, there's pooling water. Uh, it is not a great uh, friendly area right now in terms of the finishes. Um, it's not tremendously well lit at night. Um, so this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for the downtown to have uh, a great improvement to that area, make it more pedestrian friendly, make it more welcoming uh, for those other businesses along Lincoln Highway that have entrances on the back there. Um, and I'm not quite sure how this would have any sort of negative impact on the hillside. They still have complete access to their property. There's nothing that they're doing today that they won't be able to do in the future. Um, it doesn't change any of their sight lines uh, out of their windows. Uh, again, there's just two windows uh, 
facing north uh, close to the second street side we've looked at that uh, Lisa has put together perspectives uh, the building does not come that far forward uh, and if anything uh, as the Egyptian continues to be open year-round and is more successful with amenities uh, that patrons uh, now expect of venues uh, that they're going to be, you know, going to the hillside. I mean, the, the more successful the Egyptian can be, and we are saying after 10 years of research and conversations that this is the next step that needs to take place, uh, the more successful the Egyptian is, the more successful all the downtown restaurants are going to be. So uh, to your question, I, I have no question in my mind uh, that this is going to be extremely positive for the hillside uh, and all the downtown restaurants. Mary. Isn't it true that your business increases substantially when there's an event at the theater? Many times, sometimes not. I mean, it depends on the event. So, it, I mean, there's good times and bad times, like with everything downtown. Right. I have to say one of my favorite things is when there is something going on downtown because you can't get into a restaurant, you can't get into a parking place, and you can't get through downtown easily because there's so many people downtown and that's one of the I love being downtown when there's something going on <laughs> yeah go ahead Mr. Burke I'd like to make one other comment uh, you ought to drive down uh, Palmer Court uh, tonight look at the snow on the side you could there isn't 10 feet try it what are they going to do push the snow all the way to second street I've raised that issue with uh Mr. Nicholas, what are you going to do? Push it? Because you can't push it up. There's a building there. Good, drive down the alley tonight, and you'll see that it's, it's not very habitable, uh, easy to drive down, and a fire truck can't get down there. We've talked about the fire department driving a truck down there. I haven't heard anyone say they staged it. I'm told that arms come out of some of those fire trucks when you start to working on the second level. Mr. Burke, I believe that she did address that by saying the fire department would not put a, an extension ladder or hook and ladder in that area anyway. What, do do none of these other trucks have uh, Is that arms that come out? Is that correct in the analysis? Yeah. Do, okay. do none of these fire trucks, the arms come that out? That was not the support? recommendation by the fire department to put one there. Okay. Just well, they ought to drive Just the fire, fire. Well, they ought to drive the fire truck down there tonight. We'll see how they do. <clears throat> Do you want to speak on? I think I mentioned it. Any comments? The fire department's the approved had? the you know the plans here, um, and as noted in the report, mentioned the role of the commission is a review of the final plat, not the plans. We've given a lot of information or context for the plan because it does relate to the plat. But the what we're asking for the commission is a recommendation on the final plat itself, not the plans. We're not asking the commission to figure out where the air conditioning units will go or uh, to lay out the, the plans or anything so like that. That's more for the council. Annexation of the, spa the, the physical space, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. If I may, just for the sake of absolute clarification on this concern about fire trucks since it comes up so much, when we were standing out there with the fire chief and the engine, um, Lisa and I specifically asked about the hook and ladder truck and the outriggers, um, and he flat out said without even a moment of hesitation that the alley is not structurally built to hold the weight of that and that the way that they fight fires anyway as the alley is today it is way too close to the buildings to adequately use um, that equipment um, so he told us flat out they would never even use a ladder truck back there and they can't because of the structure of the alley so hopefully that provides some final clarification on that Okay, any further comments from the commissioners? Any further comments from the city? Nope, the uh, sample motion is provided. The uh, date of the plat, since it was revised and handed out to you tonight, is 2-18-19. So you can, if you make a motion, uh, just note that date change. And then if you wish to add to the motion too, uh, and subject to the city council approving the conveyance of the property to the Egyptian theater, Probably be appropriate too, but not required. But. <laughs> Mary may have had one more comment. Hmm? Mary, did you have one more comment? Did you have one more comment, Mary? No, just eat a lot of dirt downtown. 
<laughs> One year there's NICAR and then there's Mr. Pappas and whatever he's doing and this is hard. Lisa, I, I do have one, I have one question. Sorry. As I'm looking at the picture with the, the colored lines, so just, just for clarification, in regard to these colored lines, yes. is so it the purple? What are we, so if we look at that, right. that's an easier visual for me, sorry. Okay, so the, the red line um, along the south edge of the Egyptian theater is their current property line. Okay. Go back to that, yep. Um, the purple line is the area connecting to that red property line to the north. That is the area that will be con hopefully conveyed that's from the, the city okay. to the theater so the red lines the red line mm -hmm. is the current property line it's the current city owned property, property line okay the boundary line for palmer okay. court between palmer court and the theater gotcha so and the purple see the addition kind of follows the conveyance area right in the plant gotcha all right thank you I don't want to rush the commissioners, so if anybody is, whenever you're ready, on making a motion or whatever way you want to go tonight. I want to move on uh, with the motion, and um, I want to say in advance that I would appreciate a moment to comment after the motion has been uh, put forward. So I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the City Council approval of the final plot of the Egyptian Theater subdivision prepared by Survey Tech Data 2719, subject to all staff comments being addressed prior to recording of the plan. And then add the and subject to the City Council. Oh. And subject to the City Council approving the conveyance of the property to the Egyptian Theater. And also the data of the plat did change with the revision. It's 218. I'm sorry. 19. Did. Yes. I'll second. Um, so a motion by Castro, seconded by Maxwell. Discussion. Um, I do want to make it clear to everyone, too, again, so that there's an understanding this is not approval of anything other than the conveyance of the land. And so I do hope that the Egyptian works with its neighbors and, and to work out the issues that you have. But what we're basing this on right now is simply the, the, the land alone. Um, okay. So I, I just want to echo some of the things that have been said already, uh, particularly by Mr. Klein to my right. Um, there is absolutely no doubt in my head that we have two institutions in town that are coming head to head in this situation. Um, Mr. Maxwell said it very well, we are entertaining only uh, the, the conveyance of, of uh, the property, um, nothing else here. There is absolutely no doubt in my head that in the short term, the immediate neighbors of the, of the theater will be affected in a negative way. I think it is the responsibility of the city to minimize the effect that this short term um, is, uh, process is going to have. Um, I, I, I have been many times and continue to go to the hillside and I would, I would hate to see that the effect uh, becomes, um, goes too far. Uh, so I really hope that the parties involved, the theater, the architects, the city itself does everything it can to, to minimize uh, what happens here. Uh, I really appreciate the hillside. Take this as an advertisement. If you want to have a serious conversation with your partner or anybody, go to the hillside. Um, my brother-in-law from Louisville, Kentucky, went to the hillside <coughs> and enjoyed it very much. Um, I know that this is not just about the hillside. There are other properties around this property. Again, I think there is a very significant responsibility here from the city to minimize any uh, negative effect that this may have. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ron, do you have anything? Actually, <clears throat> I'm not very enthused about this. However, I will say to Mary, in the long run, I think this is going to be good for your business. I don't think it's going to damage the hillside in the long run. In the short run, it's going to be a pain in the neck while they're doing the construction. But I think a, a, the theater doing well is good for your restaurant. I'll come to the restaurant every time there's an event there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess I say I'm, I agree with everything that the, my fellow commissioners have said, and I'm really glad you have more bathrooms in the Egyptian because <laughs> I've been there in three bathrooms. You spend your whole break just standing in line, so I think that's really positive. I, I think the other positive opportunity here is the fact that more events can ha will be able to happen which then will bring more people to our downtown and more people into our city. So um, I, I get the headaches, I understand, and, and um, you know, I agree with what other commissioners have said. It's gonna be a pain for a little bit. Um, the worst part of a construction is having to see the deconstruction that has to happen, but you get the, the benefits afterwards. So um, we hopeful that there will be good benefits. So if there's no further discussion, um, roll call. Buckley? Or, sir, excuse me. Castro? Yes. Klein? Yes. Maxwell? Yes. Barbie? Yes. Chair Dow? Yes. Five yes. Motion passes. Okay. So the next item is report. Uh, next scheduled meeting is March 6th. We do not have any hearing scheduled this time, um, so I'm not sure if we'll have any other agenda items. We'll certainly advise the commission the week before if there's a cancellation or not. Um, also, just a quick note, the, uh, we'll have the doors are going to be open now for coming up to the meeting. At, they will not close, so if you come between 5 and 5.30, you'll be able to get in. So <laughs> they were open this morning. Yeah, tonight, work so. that out with the uh, police department. So, a little more convenient. That's all. Okay. So, I just have uh, one comment to make. Tonight is our last meeting with Ms. Yeah. Charlton. Um, and I want to thank you for the contributions you've given to the city, the help that you've led, you know, given to us. Um, I've learned a great deal from you. And I wish you the best in your future. And if anyone else has anything else they'd like to say, please go ahead. I agree. I'm going to miss you. And I mean, I've only known you. I've only been on this commission for two or three years. I forgot, but it's, yeah. <laughs> but we'll miss you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a very short time for me, but thank you so much for everything that you've helped us with and supported us on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for your support of not only me, but the community development staff. It's been a great pleasure to work with you and over the last two and a half years. So it's about the same time, Katerina. Um, this is my last meeting and I'm gonna miss everyone. Um, I'm gonna move on to another community and help them mediate their built environment and see, uh, see what I can do for them. I only hope that wherever I do land, I have people like you that are eager and committed to the community. So it's been a great experience and I thank you for that. I look forward to seeing the other <coughs> projects that are in the queue coming to a fruition. So uh, keep up the good work and, and make those things come true and good luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed working with you clear back when I was with the county. So good That's luck. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If nothing further, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Second. So moved by Klein, seconded by Maxwell. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>